I wonder what we think of first when we hear the word mission. Does it fill us with joy and expectation of what God will do? Or does it land on us as something of a burden because we hear it as a, an exhortation to work harder simply to increase the numbers in our churches? We might have a narrow experience or unhelpful baggage associated with the word. If we do, a deeper engagement with the five marks of mission adopted by the Anglican Communion is probably a good idea. These marks set before us the fullness of the kingdom that God calls us to, and each mark is dependent on the others, and it's together that they express a holistic mission, which is Christ's own mission. They flow out of the words of Jesus in John's Gospel, when he says to his disciples, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. It's a good time for the wider Church of England and those of us part of God's Church here in Birmingham to focus afresh on what it is that Jesus is sending us to do and be as a church as we emerge from the experience of the pandemic and find ourselves as a nation and a world facing many challenges. I want to reflect briefly here on the mark that calls us to teach, baptise and nurture new believers. This, along with the mark that is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, flows directly from the Great Commission at the end of Matthew's Gospel, when the risen Jesus says to his followers, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. This commission to teach, baptise and nurture new believers is for all Christians and not just church leaders. Yes, you did hear me right. Whilst baptism is a sacrament and gift of God through the church, we are all called to nurture new Christians in the faith and to bring them to baptism. Really? Me? You may still be asking. Teach and nurture new believers? If you already count yourself as a disciple of Jesus, then again, yes. This is because we're not talking here about needing to have done lots of courses and formal education in order to be able to disciple others, though there are many good and helpful discipleship programs around. But what is captured in this mark of mission is something of the way that Jesus did things and how he taught and nurtured his own disciples. He invited them to travel with him and learn from both his actions as well as his words. He wasn't interested simply in making converts, but disciples, those who would walk in the way of faith that Jesus modelled, who would go on to live out the other five marks of mission, who would care for those in need, challenge injustice, pursue peace and care for creation. It's important to note how in the Great Commission, Jesus tells his disciples to go and make other disciples, teaching them to do everything he has taught them, that is, not simply to proclaim the faith, but to live it. And so we need to move away from thinking about teaching uh, the faith and discipling others as something that just church leaders do, or as about simply doing discipleship courses, though the best of these, like our own way of discipleship here in Birmingham, takes us on a life-shaping journey in the company of others. It's not just about head learning. The way of Jesus is to urge each of us to model ourselves on him and in turn become an example and model to others. St Paul in 1 Corinthians says something similar when he asks his hearers to be imitators of him as he is an imitator of Christ. This call to disciple others is a task of joy, not burden, because it's about 
seeing the lives of others transformed by encounter with Jesus Christ, just as we seek to see our own lives transformed. And it's truly wonderful when we see this happen. I was reminded of this just recently. At the end of a service of baptism and confirmation, one of the candidates came to talk with me. He was full of joy and told me how his life had been completely turned around. He'd lost his job, found himself alone in a squalid bedsit, turned to drugs to get him through, and had concluded he'd really nothing to live for. He'd happened to wander uh, past the open doors of uh, his local church, and he found a member of the church cleaning up in there. After a quiet welcome, he was handed a brush and invited to help clean. That quiet acceptance and offering him an opportunity to, to fit in and belong led to him getting involved in other practical ways and gradually to him asking that person about their faith. As he learned from them more about Jesus, just from being with them, he decided he wanted to formally prepare for baptism and confirmation. We may not think that discipling someone might begin with us offering them a brush and asking them to get cleaning. But this is what happened in the case of that man when he encountered another follower of Jesus who was willing to share something of their own story and faith. I hope that may encourage you to see ways in which you and your church might respond more fully to Jesus' commission to teach, baptise and nurture new believers and see the joyful transformation that God brings about in the lives of others. Mm -hmm.